Hi, Patreon. You might not know this to look at it, but this is a pretty cold video. We've had some lows down in the negatives in Wyoming in the last few days. Um, a couple of people have asked about the fires that occurred in the last few days of 2021 in Boulder County, Colorado. That was certainly familiar territory to me, but I was not anywhere near that, and uh, nothing of mine was damaged and no one that I directly know was displaced. Although, uh, for those of you uh, concerned for the people affected by those fires, several hundred families, I believe the Red Cross of Colorado and Wyoming are taking donations specifically for their support. So today I'm back with another one of my Old Norse lessons, a series that uh, definitely took a hit in its amount of continuation in 2021. But uh, I know that many of my Patreon supporters are really into the series. I think of, for example, longtime supporter Fabiana L. Um, and I am here to uh, continue those for your sake. What I want to do, uh, at least for the next few of these, is do fairly short grammar subjects. After all, you have a lot of the really the the really really absolutely necessary grammar if we do small sections of grammar going forward with exercises at the end and then especially with you seeking out your own readings and material that you're interested in reading at places like hamskringla.no um, you're going to get a lot out of practice now and less out of me lecturing you about particular fine details of grammar it's actually kind of better for you to be encountering those fine points of grammar and reading and kind of for clarification about them so that you see what I'm talking about and you're not kind of just, you know, it's how to put this. You're better prepared for a fight if you had boxing classes because you know what it's actually like to have someone trying to hit you, right? I can stand here and I can do a video of boxing moves, um, but if you've never been in a fight, then it's kind of hard to remember those when someone actually starts throwing his fist at you, right? Old Norse grammar can be kind of the same way. At this point, you need to be encountering it to sort of know what those fists are like so that I can teach you the counter moves, as it were. All right. That's a lot of foreground for the subject of adverbs, at least an introduction to adverbs in Old Norse. <laughs> Now, for the most part, adverbs are actually pretty easy. They are generally formed by just taking the neuter, accusative, singular of an adjective and using it adverbially. Now, uh, let me backtrack one second and say that adverbs are a somewhat fuzzy class, right? There's not quite the same amount of, uh, uh, of definition to adverb as there is to a noun, right? A person, place, thing, concept. Adverbs typically are words used to modify verbs and or to modify adjectives. So of course the classic adverb in English is well. So you can say that Cormac McCarthy writes well. So you have well, the adverb describing the verb writes. You can also use well to describe an adjective such as saying that such and such car is a well-oiled machine. Or oiled is an adjective, of course, participial adjective, described by, uh, clarified by, colored by the adverb well. Old Norse is the same, right? So the same words will be used to describe adjectives as to describe verbs. However, unlike in English, typically if you have an adverb describing an adjective, um, instead of having adverb dash adjective the way you do in English, well oiled, you will typically just have, uh, you'll just make a compound out of it, especially with vel, well, or ill, badly. Um, so just be aware of that. For the most part, independent adverb words are going to be used with verbs, um, whereas our 
English adverb adjective phrases would typically be just compound adjectives. Um, so let me give you a few examples just from uh, kicking around some sagas of uh, adverbs used that way. Again, mostly they're just the neuter, accused of singular, of an adjective. So, han gerisk brot mikil mother o gerviliger. He quickly becomes a uh, big man and an accomplished one. So our adverb is brot, quickly. It's describing gerisk, uh, becomes. And it is the neuter accusative singular of brother, swift. Right. So swiftly becomes. Uh, same adverb, drochning finner that brot. Uh, the queen finds it quickly. Sferdit var sem loost lagi fyrir honum. It was as if the sword lay loose, loosely before him, right? This is the adjective laus, loose. So laus, the sword is lying, ligar. Uh, the, 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 the verb is ligam. It's laying loosely, laying free. It's not, not, you know, tightened down, not pinned down to something. So hetir fovnir er her ligar skamt hedan o brot. That one is named Favnir, who lies, Liger, a short ways, scamped, uh, from here away. Now, actually, in a sense, we have several adverbs here. We have her, you can consider an adverb because it's describing where someone is lying here. Scamped, our more traditional adverb, neuter accusative singular of scammer, short, so like lies shortly away, a short distance away. And then we have kind of a compound adverb in abroad, away. Uh, actually, this is related to English abroad, right? Like not, it's not not close. So a short distance away, and even hethon from here is uh, adverbial in a sense. So again, adverbs fairly fuzzy class. If egi er skjot brugvit thesum rovahag, if this council is not quickly changed. So, skjot, neuter accusative singular of skjoter, fast, quick. Let me give you a quick word from uh, my friends and partners at Grimfrost here, and I'll come back and talk about some um, other adverbs formed from adjectives that are not quite as simple as the neuter accusative singular uh, T ending ones here. So as you might guess, in Old Norse, like in English, there are adverbs that are quite common that are a little bit more irregular. We've seen so many times how in Old Norse, like in English and many other languages, um, really common words will often have really uncommon grammatical forms because the words are used often enough to be able to remember those irregularities where they wouldn't with more seldom used vocabulary. Um, good examples of those, and they're not horrifically frequent, are, uh, or, or hard to remember, are vel, which means well, right? This is related, of course, to English well. Uh, that is good. So you can use got, right? The neuter accusative singular of go there as an adverb, but vel is the more traditional form for well, goodly. And then the opposite of vel is ilha, so badly. You would expect ilt, you do sometimes see ilt as an adverb, but ila is quite common too. And both of those tend to be kind of strengthened um, by an intensifying adjectival roots that are attached to the front of them. So for example, we have al vel, you know, all well, extremely well. Truer thu them al vel? Do you trust them like completely well, very well? Honum lika thithat stor illa. He liked that big badly, right? Extremely badly, not very much at all. 
Um, but of course, you can also just see them used in their typical way. That hook not them bull them illa. Uh, it struck both of their minds badly. It, it appealed uh, not at all to both of them. Another kind of unusual one that's more of a class of adverbs that's unusual is adjectives that end in the suffix liger, which are often adjectives formed from nouns, have an adverb in liga or just la. Now, of course, classic example of this, we have the noun dränger, right? Our classic Old Norse compliment for a, you know, a, a, a recklessly courageous individual. The adjective is drängeliger, right? So a man is drängeliger, a woman is drängelig. But if you do something in a dränger fashion, then you do it drängeliga or drängela, right? Not drängelig. So, uh, interestingly enough, we see this on uh, runestones, and one of the most famous runestones of all for the Dranger complex words is uh, Sermon Lawn 179, where we read, and I'll just use sort of normalized Old West Norse here, Ther foru drangela fjari at guli ok austarla erni govu do sunarla Serklandi. So here we have three of these. They went like drangers, right, in a dranger fashion, drangela, far away to gold, for gold, for the purpose of gold, and easterly, out in the east, they gave to the eagle, i.e. they killed people, left them dead on the battlefield for the eagle to eat. And they died southerly, sunarla, in Serklandi, with Serk Land being an Old Norse expression for uh, like uh, uh, Arabic speaking lands. All right, so this is true again of any adjective that ends in liger. So, in a similar way, holder liger, sarcastic, uh, we see used as an adverb, holder liger uh, in Saga uh, Volsung, Sigur Konungur, Thoti Ser, Holder Liga, Svarat Vera. King Sigur thought that he had been answered sarcastically, Holderliga. A couple others that I'll mention before getting to the vocabulary you ought to learn and some exercises for you today. Langer, meaning long in uh, any dimension, including time, has a unique adverb, lengi, that you'll see pretty often. So instead of Langt being the adverb form from uh, longer for like for a long time. Although you see that a little bit, the typical adverbial form is the irregular lengi. So, thou eru mjok lengi osant. Here we have three adverbs. They are very long times, mjok lengi together, osant. All three of those are technically adverbs of different varieties. Mjok is kind of an intensifying adverb often used with other adverbs or adjectives, right? It's like very much. Lengi, a long time, osant, together. Hon mun egi lengi leva. She will not live a long time. Uh, and then, you know, even egi, don't, didn't, not, is technically an adverb. So there's a ton of adverbs out there. For the most part, again, Old Norse is going to use just an adjective, but in the neuter accusative singular, which, by the way, is a pattern continued in the modern Scandinavian languages today. Then we have some uh, special ones we have to learn on their own, especially vel, well, illa, badly, lengi, for a long time, long. And then keep in mind that adjectives ending in liger, which are typically adjectives already formed from nouns, form their adverbs with the suffix liga, or just la. So, drenge liga, drenge la, like a dranger, hodo liga, sarcastically, and those are from, respectively, drenge liga, hodo liga. All right. I hope that's enough for you to go on here. I'm going to give you some vocabulary to learn, some exercises, some readings. But again, I really hope 
that you are starting to read something on your own that interests you in particular, um, that is leading you to discover new wrinkles uh, while Old Norse punches you in the face, and then you can come to me, your Old Norse boxing coach, to learn uh, counter moves as you go. Remember, please use me as a resource. Please remember at the same time, Patreon messages don't work. Uh, they have an irritating way of not even giving me notifications and then me not even being able to see them when I check for them manually. So um, if you haven't reached out to me before on Patreon, uh, you can use the Patreon community page or um, email Stella. And Stella can get you in touch with me um, uh, by email or whatever else might, might work better. Sorry about Patreon messages. It is an irritating thing that I've been dealing with for more than a year. All right, Patreon, thank you so very much again for your support and kindness. I hope 2022 is treating you all well. And for now, beautiful Wyoming, let me wish you all the best.